Halleluja! Would you turn to Psalm 21, please? Grab your training manuals. It's called the Bible. As we begin to grow in a race religion, one of the things we have to constantly do is erase religion. Amen? Amen. Because we are not religious. We're eternal. We have a relationship with the Creator. So we're all eternal lights, no longer humanites. Hey, right? Psalm 127, is everybody there? <laughs> Let's speak, to, speak it together, please. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Okay. <laughs> Unless the Lord guards the house, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early and sit, stay up late to eat the bread of sorrow. For so he gives his beloved what? Sleep. In other words, one of the things he is saying is, look at he is not only asking, he is requiring. We are a time of requirement of building the house of God. Many people quit. They stop. Unless the Lord builds a house, amen, they labor in vain. You know, so in this, we can't build God's house even by deception, God's house is built by truth, isn't it? Amen. So in this, there's an area where we've got to begin to not only hear, but see and receive the things of the Holy Spirit that is saying, this is how I want my house built. See, so many people try to build the house of God, but it doesn't stand. And there's two houses of God, but he calls them one. There's this house first that must be built. And then there's a house where we gather that must be built. And I'm not talking about structurally. I'm talking about operationally. Amen. First Corinthians 3. First Corinthians 3. So those who build the house of God according to the will of God are called kingdom builders. Because you're actually building the kingdom. And we're about the Father's business. We should be always about building the kingdom of God, no matter what it is. The attitude and intent should always be about building the kingdom. Whatever we are doing, we should be about building the kingdom. Whether I'm laboring, I'm building the kingdom. Why? Because I'm giving tithes, offerings. I may, I'm laboring unto the Lord. What am I, what's my purpose? Building the kingdom. Building the kingdom. But it must be done according to the kingdom builder. Who is the kingdom? <laughs> Not according to our will or desires. That's why it's important every day that we exchange our desires for his, our will for his. Amen? 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9, please. Now he who, oh, I'm sorry, for we are what? God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another one builds on it. But let each one take heed in how he builds on what? The foundation. So you can't build something without a foundation, can you? See, many people, and you'll hear me say this over, many people are trying to build a three a third, th a three floor uh, building on a first floor foundation, it always crumbles. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> verse 12, uh, or verse 11. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with what? Gold, silver, Precious stones, wood, hay, straw, 
Each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by what? Fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. Now remember, he said you're not going to build on, but this is not physical materialism. This is spiritual materialism. Amen? It's a spiritual building. That's why what we're doing is God's saying, look, you've got to build this temple. Then I'm going to use this house, this temple, to assist to build my other temples. Amen? So we are right now in fellowship in the house of God, but it didn't become the house of God until you came. Other than that, it was a structure built by money. Amen? So this structure is going to go away. It's temporary. But we who are of Christ are eternal. So what he wants to do, though, is he wants to build this house so that we can work in unity for the operation of this house. Praise be to God. All right, are you ready? Verse 15. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. Do you not know that you are the what? temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you. So what house is he talking about? You. Amen. He says, if anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Let no one deceive himself. If any among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. Therefore, let no one boast in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Paulus or Cephas or the world of, or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. Now look at verse 23. And you are Christ, and Christ is God's. Again, there's two houses, isn't there? There's your house that he builds, and then there's the house of God of operations. Amen. And Proverbs 24. Kingdom builders. Everyone say, I'm a kingdom builder. Now, he talked about getting wisdom, didn't he? So we need wisdom from above, not from beneath. There's the wisdom that builds earthly things, but there's wisdom that builds spiritual things. In verse 1, would you read it with me? Do not be envious of evil men, nor desire to be with them, for their heart devises violence, and their lips talk of troublemaking. Through wisdom a what? House is built. Now, is that the wisdom from above or beneath? Above. In other words, you can have wisdom to be a contractor, but that's earthly things, isn't it? But there is a wisdom that comes from above that builds the house of God, an eternal thing. Through wisdom, a house is built, and by what? Understanding it is established. So you can't just, you got to have understanding, don't you? See, wisdom tells you what to do, but you've got to understand what he's telling you. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with what? All precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong. Yes, a man of knowledge increases strength. For by wise counsel, you will wage your own war. So there's a battle in this, isn't there? And in a multitude of counsels, counselors, there is what? Safety. Wisdom too is too lofty for a fool. He does not open his mouth in the gate. He who plots to do evil, evil will be called a schemer. The devising of foolishness is sin, and the scoffer is an abomination to men. Again, there is wisdom of the earth, and there is wisdom from above. Whatever wisdom you are more in tune in, of grabbing hold of, or seeking, is what you will build with. So you're either you're going to build things to become a kingdom builder or you're going to build earthly things to become a carnal builder, one or the other. 
Now, you know, many people say, well, man, I just don't have enough time to do this stuff. It's your responsibility to make time. Because when you stand before him, you will regret that you didn't. Amen. First Peter chapter two. So the wisdom of the earth builds up earthly pride. Wisdom from above builds up humility. Amen. People have a tendency to say, look what I built. Look what I built. Earthly pride. Wisdom from beneath. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 2. We'll start at verse 1. Would you read it with me, please? Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes, desire pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, coming to him as a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. Everyone say, I'm precious. Turn to your neighbor say, you're precious. <laughs> you also, as what? Living stones are being built up a what kind of house? Spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious, but to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become a key, chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Beloved, I be beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may be by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. Spiritual houses as kingdom builders. Man, let me tell you how quickly people forget. How quickly people drift and begin to build their own house instead of the house of God. They begin to take more time in building other things. How quickly we forget. And that's influence from darkness that brings a stop to building the house of God. See, you and I should constantly increase. So you and I are increasing in the kingdom, but decreasing to self. So we should be more increasing as kingdom builders and always less increasing as earthly builders. Amen? Or carnal builders. In Matthew 7, And, of course, the enemy wants you to stop building, doesn't he? That's where, you know, he comes in, he brings complacency, laziness, compromise, drift. You know, one of the things that people want to do is get their life back together. Bummer. I want to lose it. I don't have a life. If I'm truly a believer of Jesus Christ, I have no life. Our life is in him, not, we don't have a life. And that's where people st start going again. They get this brand new life and then they start building uh, the kingdom of God. They start building this house. And the next thing that voice comes and says, man, you know what? What about this? What about this? 
And they begin to build in another direction. They begin to more, put more time into building carnality, materialism, instead of building the kingdom. See, if you can't build this up and increase this and constantly increase it and maintain it, then there is, you, you can't be a part of the operation that's going on because you can't fit in. There's no unity. There must be a unified. That's why Jesus prayed that we would be unified, that we'd be united. He prayed that we would know his glory. He prayed this. But again, he also warns us, take heed in how you build that house. Why? Because if you build it with carnality, you will drift. You will stumble. You will backslide. You will put more time into building carnality than you will kingdom. And Matthew 7, 24. What did Jesus say? Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. What is the rock? It's called the anointing. Everyone say anointing. anointing. See, people are not building. The, the anointing is the foundation of everything. Without the anointing, you and I are nothing. I don't care how much word you have. If you're not backed by the anointing, you're just throwing out seeds. It's not a sword. And Jesus said, I came to give you a sword, not peace. So the anointing, the word of God is always backed by the anointing, but you got to be filled with the anointing. Does everybody understand it? That's why it's important in fellowship. That's why it's important to get the worship services. That's why, you know how many people try to avoid worship? Because they're deceived. Don't come for the word, come for the presence. Amen? When you come for the presence of God, the word is enjoyed. Look at one of the things that happens was when you have that relationship, even when we're worshiping, we don't want to stop. You don't want to stop, man. You just want to keep going and get saturated and saturated and drenched and drenched until you take off. Because we're thirsty and hungry. I'm thirsty and hungry for the presence of God. Why? He is the living word. Amen? He's the living word. Oh, praise God. So he says, listen, I'll call that person a wise person who builds his house on the anointing. What is the anointing? The eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. That's who Jesus is. People are still looking at Jesus as a human. In fact, the word tells us he's, don't look at him in the flesh anymore. We'll go to that scripture later. Jesus, the Christ, he is the Christ. He is the eternal presence and power of and truth of God Almighty that came into this realm. And he gave it all to the Holy Spirit for me and you. That's what's called the anointing. In fact, the word anoint means to rub. In the Old Testament, they used to pour the anointing on the heads of individuals. And we still do today. We anoint that sick and so forth. They said they will recover. We had a glorious anointing service Friday. It was glorious. Glorious. Woohoo. But in that, we, we were saturated. We were overwhelmed. It was glorious. Oh, praise God. So, verse 25. And it says this. Why? Because that person built the house on the foundation of the eternal presence and power and truth of God Almighty, which is called the anointing. And it says, and the rain descended. The floods came. Who's the flood from? The enemy. And the winds blew and beat on that house. What house? Your house. And it did not fall, for it was founded on the what? The rock, the anointing. Everyone say, the rock, the rock. is the anointing. Yeah. It's not Jesus the human. Does nobody get it? It's Christ the eternal. It's amazing how many, let me tell you, the, the devil doesn't want people to know this. He just wants you to get saved, get the word, and go out. Why? He knows if you're not backed by the power of God, you can't affect him. You throw seeds, no sword. 
Is everybody okay? Oh, glory. Are you ready? Verse 26. But everyone who what? Hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Okay, so what happens is if a person doesn't maintain that anointing, doesn't maintain that arena of keeping the foundation solid, it begins to grumble. Amen? We are spiritual house. This is a spiritual house. We build on the rock foundation, which is the what? Anointing. Everyone say anointing. Matthew 16. In verse 13, kingdom builders. Are you a kingdom builder or a carnal builder? What kingdom are you building for? In verse 13, let's speak it. When Jesus came in the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said to them, But who do you say that I am? See, you can't know him without the anointing because the anointing knows the anointing. Yeah. I'm going to say that again. You can't know him unless you're anointed because the anointing knows the anointed one. Yeah. Amen? Has everybody got that? Yeah. Hallelujah. And he said, well, who do you say that I am? In verse 16, Simon Peter answered and said, you are the what? Christ. Oh, he got it. You're the Christ. You're the eternal presence and power of God Almighty. The son of the living God. Jesus answered and said, and blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. Ah, why? He just said, look at you want a real late relationship with me? You can have a real relationship with the father. And it's through the anointing. Through the anointing. That's why some people only have a relationship with the Bible. What, if, what would you do if you didn't have it? Some people wouldn't know Jesus if they didn't have the Bible. Because they're bound by the letter and don't know him personally. There's not a relationship. The only relationship they have with him is through the knowledge, but not by the person. Amen? And that's terrible. That's why people drift and fall and do whatever they want. They begin carnal builders instead of kingdom builders. They don't really know him. I have left churches and I've left that place. And I said, Lord, what's going on here? And he said, they don't know me. They don't know me. I thought, wow. They don't, why? Because if the pastor don't know him, Others don't know him. Why? Because it comes from the head. Is everybody okay? He said, blessed are you, Samuel Jr. No man's revealed us. My Father in heaven. Why? Because you can have a connection with my dad through me in the spirit. Verse 18. And also I say to you that you are Peter. And on the what? On this rock. On this revelation. On the foundation of the anointing. I will build my church. And what? And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Let me tell you, you can't be touched under the anointing. Everyone say, the devil can't touch me under the anointing. See, so what he tries to do is get you from the anointing. He tries to get you to build another thing. Why? So you walk away from becoming a kingdom builder and a self builder. We spend more time trying to carnal build instead of spiritual build. And then the enemy easily sways us. And there were really no effect to the uh, enemy's kingdom. Amen? We become no effect to the enemy's kingdom and a defect to the kingdom of God. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. In verse 19, and what does he say? And I will give you what? The keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. That's warfare. Amen. See, 
A kingdom builder must also be a warrior. Or you're not a kingdom builder. Because without warfare, you can't build the kingdom. In fact, you can't even build a house without first removing all the garbage and trees and everything else. And then you pour the concrete for the foundation. That's called kingdom building. Why? You must warfare to move back the powers of darkness. If you're not a warfare person, you are not a kingdom builder. Amen? Is everybody okay? Praise God. So we must not only build, but we must maintain the foundation of the anointing of Christ, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. Amen? All carried by the Holy Spirit. He tells us truth. He guides us to all truth. And he interprets the word that is even written of truth. Hmm. He interprets the word. That's why people don't understand the word. They can only read it at face value and never know the depths of what God is saying. Why? Let me tell you, this word is three-dimensional. Past, present, and future. It is deep. That's why Jesus said, deep calls on to deep. God is always trying to bring us to a deeper place. Yes. The anointing, through the, carried by the Holy Spirit, tells us truth, guides us, interprets. He empowers us to lay hands on the sick to cast out devils. He trains us for warfare. This is the spiritual rock. Look at it. That's what the hardcore Christians are, man. If you're a hardcore Christian, you don't live for you. You live for him. You make time. You're a warrior. You strike every morning. Amen. You fight. Why? Because you have a desire for God's presence. Because you wake up in the morning and there's nothing but the presence of wickedness all around. It's your responsibility to remove that wickedness. It's your responsibility to remove darkness and deception. Because every presence of evil carries deception. Amen? Amen? So we got to push them out, cast them out, get them out of the way, and do warfare. Because how can you have a relationship with God without removing the presence of evil first? That's our responsibility. Amen? Is everybody okay? Why? Because this is a spiritual house. Amen? Spiritual house called the rock. This is not a rock where people walk around. Hello? Hello? This is a spiritual rock. It's amazing. In Mecca, they walk around a rock, a square cube. They do. It's just nothing but a black cube. And they walk around. It's called a, a spiritual pl place. They walk around a rock. It's never about physical. It's about spiritual. Amen? Is everybody okay? It's called the rock of deception. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Kingdom builders. First Corinthians 10, please. Is everybody okay? Training for reigning. In verse 1, 1 Corinthians 10, let's speak it. Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be what? unaware that our fathers were under the cloud and passed through the sea and all were baptized in Moses in the cloud and in the sea and all ate the what? Same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ, the eternal presence, power and truth of God Almighty. Now look it. It's amazing. It's so powerful because when the people became thirsty, when they were in a wilderness, the first time the Lord told Moses to strike the rock and water would come out, meaning Jesus would be struck and hung on the cross. The second time they were thirsty, the Lord told Moses to speak to the rock. Speak to the rock. Why? Because a new covenant would be called the ministry of the spirit, which means breath. 
Amen? So there will be power in the tongue. It's no longer physical. That's why it's important to speak the word because what you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. And Moses disobeyed God, and he blamed it on the people because they angered him. So Moses did not speak to the rock. He struck the rock, and it prevented him from going with everyone to the promised land. For much is accounted. For much who knows. Amen. Verse 5. But with most of them, God was what? Not well pleased, for their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. And these things became our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. And do not become idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Nor let us commit sexual immorality or as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 fell. Nor let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by serpents, which are actually known as demons now. Nor complain as some of them also complained and were destroyed by the destroyer. See, every one of these acts was associated with destruction, wasn't it? Hallelujah. Verse 11. Now all these things happen to them as what? examples and they were written for our admonish upon whom what the ends of all ages have come therefore let them who thinks he stands take heed lest he what fall no temptation is overtaking you except such as is common to man but god is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able but with the temptation will also make a way of escape that you may be able to, what? Bear it. Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. Spiritual rock is Christ. It's the anointed one and the anointing. Again, not building in vain, but building in humility of Christ through the anointing. Many drift away, like I said, by not maintaining the anointing. They begin to touch unclean things without fellowship. They begin, to, they begin to lack in prayer. They lose prayer time. They become busy with self-building instead of kingdom building. Amen? I want to share something with you very important before we even get there. One who is a kingdom builder is not only a warrior, but only kingdom builders go from glory to glory. Others do not. You'll see. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Because the fruit of true kingdom builders is glory to glory. Oh, glory. Second Timothy chapter 2. Would you read it with me in verse 1? You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. What does grace mean? God's plan. Amen? It's not unmerited, fav un 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 unmerited favor. Does everybody get this? It's unmerited love, which is God's plan. That's what God's grace is. People, I'm under God's grace. Really? You're still sleeping with this person? You're still doing this? You're still stealing, lying, drinking, and partying? Yes, I can go home. You're an idiot. No conviction. No fellowship, no conviction. Hardened heart. Remember, God's grace is the plan for me and you to escape the deception of the devil and the wrath of God. That's, it. That's what grace is. People are making a lot of money on grace but it ain't true grace. It's doctrine of demon grace. Verse 2. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who also will be able to teach others also. You therefore must what? Endure hardship as a what? Good soldier of Jesus Christ. 
No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. In other words, he's not a carnal builder. He's a kingdom builder. That he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. How many of y'all know you've been enlisted as a soldier? Everyone say, I'm called, I'm called. To, battle. to battle. My purpose, My purpose. is to destroy Satan's kingdom. My destiny, My destiny is to infiltrate the world system with the talents and abilities God's given me to rescue the lost. Verse 5. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he what? Competes according to the what? Rules. Okay? That means you must build by the guiding of who? The Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody okay? The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffered trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains, but the word of God's not chained. Therefore, I what? I endure all things. For the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a what? Faithful saying. If we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers. But be what? Diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, and rightly dividing the word of truth. But do what? Shun profane and idle babbling, for they will increase into more ungodliness. Kingdom builders are also Warriors, because you can't build without a fight. Every advancement is established by victory in battle. Has everybody got it? Every advancement is established by victory in battle. No victory, no advancement. Galatians chapter 2. One of the worst things that can happen is to be successful in the wrong assignment. Amen? Galatians chapter 2 and verse 17. In verse 17, would you speak it with me, please? But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we are what? Ourselves also are found sinners. Is Christ therefore a minister of sin? Certainly not. For if I build again on those things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Now listen. Many people get freed up with certain things and they begin to go back to them and build on them. Amen? He says you're a transgressor then. Well, you used to smoke, you got delivered, and now you're smoking again. Well, that's called transgression then. Why? Because you're building on something. You're exchanging. That's what the enemy wants to do, exchange things. Well, I used to spend more time doing this. I used to spend more time doing that. I used to, you know, many of us were, when we were in the world, of course, if we were drug addicts and whatever, I know when I was an addict out there, you know, I, I was concerned about my, you know, believe it or not, I was concerned about my physical being. I used to try to eat right. I used to try to do things right. Of course, I took all kinds of dope that nullified everything that I was trying to do until it finally overtook me and I couldn't eat right anymore. <laughs> It was like whatever you could eat. But it's amazing where we begin to build on those things. Then we begin to spend more time at the gym. We begin to spend more time doing this. We begin to spend, now what are we doing? We're building ourselves up again, the old man. Does everybody understand that? Instead of constantly building up the new man, the new man. Don't get me wrong. It's good to be healthy and strong, Amen. But what you take your time to do more of is what you become. Amen. Amen? That's what you become. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Again, for if I build again on those things which I destroyed, I make myself a what? A transgressor. For if for I through the law died to the law that I might live to God. I have been what? Crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died what? In vain. Oh my goodness. Again, many start building uh, on the anointing and then they begin to drift. They start building on things that were destroyed, things that God destroyed. Amen? And why? By not maintaining the anointing as kingdom builders, they don't fight anymore. Their foundation becomes weakened by lack of battle victories. And eventually it crumbles and given into the course of worldliness or false doctrine. 2 Corinthians 3. Over 23 years ago, I was baptized in the glory of God. I was in the glory cloud. I got baptized in the glory cloud. I got baptized in the Holy Spirit in the glory cloud of God Almighty. Believe me, I was completely changed. Everything that was darkness left. <laughs> they ran for their lives. <laughs> I couldn't function in this world for almost two months. You could ask my wife. It was difficult. My only love was him. I loved my wife, but I, would, I loved. Man, when I tasted the glory of God, when I tasted what home was like, I didn't want to come back. When that cloud lifted in front of me and I began to walk in the world, I realized how filthy and disgusting this place is. And men play in it. To me, it was like playing in the garbage piles. And people were demonized. I saw demons on people. I saw people chained. I saw serpents. I saw all kinds of things. I remember going in, in a public place, and there's nothing but dark shadows on people's backs and stuff. I thought, my gosh, Lord. My wife couldn't even get me to... Go to the mall. I didn't want to go to the mall. We were getting remarried. I didn't want to wear gold. I didn't want anything. Because they used to have Mr. T starter kits. <laughs> I was a carnalite. I was a humanite. I was out for myself. But when Jesus came, that's all I wanted. I realized the richness of the glory of God was all I wanted. And it's all what I still want. But my excitement is when someone else gets it. Oh, glory. I want to see everyone get it. But my heart sinks when someone loses it. Because they have no idea the precious, the preciousness of his presence and his love for me and you and the price that he paid. People walk around in bitterness and unforgiveness, fear, jealousy, rage, anger. Oh man, it's, you know, Jesus hung on the cross. You know what he said Why he was in pain and getting ready to give up his spirit? He said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. Thank God it wasn't me up there. Kill them all! <laughs> That was in the flesh. <laughs> but after I, got filled and after I got filled and baptized in the spirit, in the cloud of glory, that's what I walked around saying. Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. And people, I, didn't, I never realized so much deception, so much blindness, so much delusion and confusion in people's life. I never realized it so much. And I was a part of it. And you know what? People teach it. Here's, here's deception. Here, let me teach you what deception is. It's been handed down culturally, traditional, 
through some fellow. I mean, I was, I was not brought up in a church. I was basically brought up in a church, you want to call it. I was even an altar boy. I drank the wine there. I wasn't a very good person. Didn't change me because I didn't have the presence of God. But I was brought up in religion. I hated religion. And I got lied to. Not because they did it on purpose, because they were lied to. And that lie passes on. That's how the enemy works. Amen. Amen. Everybody okay? Amen. Praise God. Where are we at? <laughs> Say what? <laughs> Did we start it yet? <laughs> oh. Verse 12. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Are you ready? Let's go for it. No, let's grow for it. Let's speak it now. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. Unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the... At the what? End of what... I have a mark there. I can't read it. <laughs> I got a black pen right there. I'm like, what's that word? <laughs> okay, verse 13. Unlike Moses who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their minds were blinded. For until this day, the veil, that same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil was taken away in the anointing. That's why even believers who've accepted Jesus Christ supposedly as Lord and Savior, but they're really not Lord yet because he can only be Lord under the anointing. He can only be Savior. Even though they say he's my Lord and my Savior. But he, he can only be Savior, not Lord. Because Lord is associated with the anointing. He says, so the, the veil is taken away in Christ, so the blinders are removed under the what? Anointing. Same thing that happened to Saul who became Paul. What happened? He got baptized in the Holy Spirit and it says scale came off his eyes. But I want you to know that the devil wants to put scales back on. Every day. But even to this day when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now who's the Lord? He's going to tell you. Why? Because this is the one that we say, he is my Lord and Savior. He said, look it. The Lord is the what? Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the carrier of the anointing, isn't he? And now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is what? Freedom. Uh, are you ready for this? Verse 18. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in the mirror the glory of the Lord, are being what? Transformed into the same image from glory to glory. Just as the Spirit of the Lord. Whoa. The fruit of kingdom builders is glory. Why? What is glory? It's an overwhelming experience that moves you forward into his image. I'm going to say that again. The glory is an overwhelming experience that moves you forward into his image. Does everybody get it? Man, when that experience comes, whew, more. More. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is an experience, isn't it? But that's not the, that's not the end. Many of us experience the glory fr Friday night. It was moving from glory to glory. But see, if you don't fight for remember, okay, what's a kingdom builder? He must what? Fight. Amen? It must be about building the eternal kingdom. And he must warfare. He must be a war, warrior. So that's what we do. But so many people give up. They don't really press in. They sit down and drift. Mm -hmm. They press in. Listen, when the king comes in, you don't sit down. You stand up. He knows those who know him. Does everybody get it? When the king comes in, we stand up, almost like attention. 
because he's the king. And we honor and respect his presence. But if you don't have recognition or understand or not sensitive enough to his presence, you, don't, you, don't, you won't do that. Listen, we should always be patiently expecting. Patient means endurance. You are battling not only the powers of darkness and whatever, but you're battling so that you can end yourself to get new. Get new. We want more. I want to know you. Even Moses, look at God spoke to Moses face to face, and he still said, I want to know you. Show me your glory, he kept saying. Show me your glory. I want to know you more. Okay, yeah, I saw you at the bush. Cool. And then check this out. Then he was taken 40 days. Snap. Taken 40 days. Didn't drink or eat. For him, it was five minutes with God. He walked out. It was 40 days later. Whoa. And what did the people do in 40 days? They built a golden calf. No direction. Because they had no direction. No relationship. And they saw. Look, at they were getting fed every day from heaven. It was falling. Boom, boom. Here comes food. Let's go. And then they had enough for over the weekend. Do you know that their shoes grew with them? They didn't have to go out and kill animals to get clothes. Shoes grew with them. Man, we can open a store that says Moses Shoes. <laughs> Never have to guarantee eternal shoes. <laughs> I mean, but what did they do? Mo Moses was gone 40 days. He comes back and the whole place was fornicating and worshiping false gods. And Why? Because Moses was the one carrying the anointing. Does everybody get it? When King Saul disobeyed God, God anointed King David. Saul got demonized called a distressing spirit because the anointing could now, the devils could now touch him. Does everybody get it? Because the anointing lifted him and went to David. He had to have David near him. Why? To keep the demons off of him. Because David carried the kingship anointing. Saul no longer didn't. Until Saul was destroyed and then David took over. See, the anointing is so marvelous. What a precious thing for me and you is the anointing, the eternal presence and power of God Almighty. And how we neglect it. Just neglect it. We get comfortable by just reading the word but never really fighting for God's presence. Again, if there was no Bible printed, what would they, did the apostles have a Bible? No, they, what did they have? They had the anointing. And God is restoring that. That's what he's bringing back more and more and more. The latter and the early reign is about the anointing of God. Where why you walk by someone, even your shadow will heal them. I'm telling you, things are about to happen soon. Jesus is coming first through the body and then himself. But first, evil is going to reach a level. But righteousness is going to reach a level too. Amen? Is everybody okay? <laughs> Glory. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Kingdom builders. See, we need to have a reality as truly what kingdom building is. Amen? And the house is built on the anointing. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, everybody there? And verse, uh, I think it's 16. Yes. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together, please. Therefore what? From now on we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him thus what? No longer. So he's saying, man, don't look at Jesus the way he used to be. 
If you saw him now, you'd probably freak out. Woolly hair, fiery eyes, snap. Nothing but glory and power. But he's trying to tell us that Jesus, who was here, was the eternal presence and power of truth of God Almighty. All wrapped up in the body that was prepared him. He was brought forth by the Holy Spirit, not by man. Amen? Verse 17. Therefore, what? If anyone is in the anointing, he's a what? New creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. In Christ, new. That means if all things are passing away, you're going from what? Glory to glory to glory to glory to glory. Changing more into his image and likeness from glory to glory to glory to glory. And what's glory? Overwhelming experience that moves you forward into his image. It's an experience that moves you forward. And that experience is done by his presence. If you've never experienced it, you need to. Galatians chapter 3. And then one more scripture. You know, you can either make time to build or you're going to just do time. When we minister in a jail, I tell them, man, no, stop doing time. You're not, if, you're, if you're counting the days, then you're doing time. Say, I got this many days to get off of probation. I got this many days for the program. I got this. I got, you're doing time. Then you're not allowing God to build a house. You're going to start building. As soon as you're caught loose on nine months, boom, you're building your own house. Me, 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 me. I need this. I got to get back to this. I got to... Oh, glory. I'd go on with that all day. 326, are you there? Let's speak it. For you are what? Sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized in Christ have put on Christ. What baptism is that? Holy Spirit. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave nor free. There's neither male nor female. For you are all in one, in one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are what? Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So we are joint heirs, aren't we? Oh, that we might know who we really are. I'm going to close at 1 Corinthians 15. <laughs> Kingdom builders. Not carnal, eternal kingdom. Spiritual kingdom builders, not physical. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 40. Is everybody there? There are also celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars. For one star differs from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is also raised a spiritual body. There is natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last man, Adam, became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural and after the spiritual. The first man was the earth made of the dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. And as the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. And, are, and as the heavenly man, 
so also are those who are heavenly. And as we have borne the what? Image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that it is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be what? Steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Kingdom builders. That's what God is requiring. Amen? Praise be to God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let the seed that has been imparted in us be protected by the blood of Christ. And let the anointing of Christ continue to overflow each and every one here today as we prepare our hearts for communion and communion with you. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.